Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today we are going to be working on this adorable peppermint mocha with a drip and this fun handle idea that I came up with. I am starting with a 30 ounce straight from the Tumblr supply store and I sanded it, prepped it, and spray painted it white. And then once that was dry, I am going to guesstimate where the center is. I just turned it upside down, took my tape, kind of cut that circle in the bottom in half and then lined up the lines with the, or lined up the tape so it looked straight on each side and pressed the tape down. And then I taped off one side completely that we're not going to be working on. And then on the other side, I just took my sm some smaller painter's tape and I'm going to be adding stripes to make it look like a candy cane. I just randomly placed one down and then I placed one directly next to it. And then I'm going to place another piece of tape directly next to that and then pull up that center piece of tape. It just helps with spacing because I am not so good at eyeballing it even though I don't like to measure. I figured this was the best way to do that. So I just continued until I had the stripes going up and down the entire side of the tumbler. After I had the stripes all taped off, I also taped off the bottom rim. I didn't want the stripes to go down into the actual bottom, so I just did a very, very low profile tape off so that the stripes would have a space to end, a spot to end. And then on removable vinyl, I cut out some super thin strips and I am going to apply those on the top and the bottom of every blue stripe of painter's tape because that way it gives when I paint it it will give an extra little line. Once I have all of that placed I am going to push down everything to make sure that there's no open or lifted spaces so that no spray paint will creep in under there. And then I took it outside and gave it a really good coat of iron lac spray paint. I just get that at Hobby Lobby. I love it because it dries super fast. And I just use the color red. And then after that is dry, we are going to peel up all the tape and reveal the beautiful design. The peeling of the tape is my favorite part. And after that, we are going to fix our little mess up here. I guess the tape just happened to pull up in that spot. So I just took a white Posca paint pen and I'm going to touch up that spot on the bottom. And then there was just a little bit of a spot where I felt like the red creeped in on the white. So I'm just going to paint over that to correct it as well. It's really not that noticeable, but to me, you know, we're always our own worst critics. I was bothered by it. So I just touched those up and then touched up again the spot on the bottom and you barely even notice that it's there. And then after that, we're going to add some epoxy. Into my epoxy, I am going to add these glitters from Diamonds and Dust. It is Angel Wings and Twinkle. And then we're using Diamonds and Dust Luster Dust in the color Pure and Purple Opal. And I just mixed that right into my epoxy and epoxied right over everything and it is beautiful it looks like it was glittered it gives just the shift of the little bit of purple in the purple opal luster dust against that red is it is stunning it this video doesn't even give it just it's it's so pretty so after that coat of epoxy was done then i am going to take some silver holographic nail tape i bought forever ago on amazon just this huge pack and 
there's so many different colors in there. It's super thin and it was perfect for this. So my first thought was just going to be adding it on the white stripes, but then I decided I wanted to add some in the center of the red stripes as well. And then at the very last minute, I decided I was going to outline the bottom part of the red stripes as well, just to, you can't even really notice it that much, but just for an extra added element in the design and it was the perfect touch for all of it and then after that I trimmed off I always overlap or go too far when I'm adding stripes and then just trim it off because every time I try to line it up perfectly it seems to move and then I have a gap so I overlap or make it long too long on purpose and then I just go through and trim everything off and then after all of that is trimmed I'm also going to trim off the top edge just scrape it off clean it up and then I'm going to add a single stripe of the silver down the side of each of the candy cane sides as well after that I printed off this cute little label I got it on Etsy last year because last year I did a version of this tumbler and it was my most popular design that I sold I sold tons of it so I printed it to fit on the white side and I didn't want to put it too high because we are going to be adding a drip and I wanted the drip to be a good size drip so I didn't want a chance at covering up any of this label and I just tried my best to center it on this white portion you'll see my very technical measurements of my fingers to see if it's placed pretty much in the center and it looked good to me so I laid that down flat and then I gave it a coat of epoxy and then we're going to move into this next step. Now while that was drying I decided that I was going to figure out how I was going to add this candy cane handle. I bought a box of these little candy canes at Hobby Lobby. It was like $12, but I bought it 50% off, so it was about six bucks, and I think there's like 50 or 25 candy canes in there. And originally I was just going to apply one, but I thought if I could put two together, it would make it a little bit stronger. So here's what I came up with. I used my UV resin and I just put some on there to attach them together and then I would set it with this new UV light that I got that I really do like and I just I placed it together and then once that was cured I added a little bit more to kind of reinforce it and just kind of kept going back and forth until I was happy with it being stuck together and then I'm going to attempt to attach this handle to the tumbler using UV resin. Now I added a very dark this melted chocolate color paint to the UV resin and I will just go ahead and spoil it now. This did not work. I'm pretty positive it's because I added the dark paint to it so it doesn't because now it's more opaque so it doesn't allow the UV light to cure it. I remember this from a long time ago. I had done like a keychain mold and I had added black paint and it never cured. So I forgot and I attempted this and it didn't work. It I held it there forever and it just was not curing. So as you can see here, I just wiped it off and it was still as wet as ever. So we're going to revamp this idea. So I am just now going to add it with just regular clear UV resin, attach that, cure it with the light, and then once that is completely cured, after I did the initial like little bit to make sure it was on there, then I went and added a little bit more and then cured that so it was pretty secure. And then I am going to give the entire cup a coat of epoxy. After that, I'm going to start on the drip. And for this, I was trying to kind of hurry, but also my idea for this epoxy was I wanted it to kind of cure quickly as well. So I am using a facet here. I think I'm using the hog speed. It was the only facet one that I had. And I mixed up that same chocolate cover, chocolate colored paint and to thicken up this epoxy, I'm also adding a little bit of cornstarch. I am out of 
nice and thick from CCD IY. And I am trying to work very quick because it's fast set already and we are thickening it up. I knew that I didn't have a ton of work time. So once it was a thickness that I liked where it didn't drip too much, but still had enough drip in it, then I went ahead and applied it on the top rim. And the way I do that is I just kind of put it on and then scrape it off so that it scrapes off everything that's on the popsicle stick. I hit it with um, a little bit of force on my hand to just kind of help move that drip. And all of these sprinkles I got last year as well. I think it's from SBN or something like that on Etsy. I will have to find them and link them below as well. And I also ordered a few extra of the peppermints just to make sure I had enough. And then after I sprinkled all of those on, I went and handpicked a few of the other colored sprinkles, like some red ones that I felt didn't have enough on there in certain spaces, certain areas. My original thought was to work on the drip and then if I had time, I was going to attempt to add the same epoxy to the spots where I was going to have that UV chocolate covered resin and it was getting thick, but I thought if I hurried, I could probably make this work. And it was perfect because I didn't want it to be able to drip at all. I didn't want this little spot to have any drip. I wanted it to look like it was just a dollop of chocolate and the candy cane was sitting in the dollops on the top and the bottom. And it was perfect. It was getting thick. It was kind of getting a little hard to work with. So I just worked as fast as I could pushing that in to just really get it around that edge of that candy cane. And then at the very end, there was a few little lines. So I just took a paper towel with a little bit of acetone on it and wiped that off. And then I let that sit overnight to make sure that epoxy was cured. And then I gave the whole cup two final coats of epoxy and it was all done. Be very careful when you are torching because you don't want to give any chance to warp those candy canes. I feel like mine did warp just a little bit, but not anything super noticeable. And that's it. It The handle is very, very sturdy. And I absolutely love that I was able to make my idea work. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a like and a follow so that you can see all of the upcoming tutorials that I have coming for 2024. Don't forget also my mentorship group will open on January 1st. I will see y'all later and have a very Merry Christmas.